Welcome back, Chief Tola Denis on State Affairs. We are discussing the Fulani question in Nigeria. And the Fulani question is also the Nigerian question. I can remember discussing the Igbo question. As you discuss whatever question, other names come into the picture. Looking at the Fulani question yes, again. Yes. It's like it is a warrior tribe. Yes. A tribe always on the mission of conquest. Yes. It's not just a Nigerian problem as we talk. No. There's also the Fulani problem in Mali. In Mali. It's raising its head in Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. In you Cameroon. Know, in Cameroon. There's in, this conflict. In Senegal. Have we really sat in down? In Central African Republic. Have we sat down to say, let's work out a comprehensive framework to solve the Fulani problem beyond the issues of emotion? Yes, I know. Well, you're right. And uh, I also agree with you that we should look at them beyond emotion. Uh, the Fulani as a people may have come from the union between uh, the Babas and some remnants of uh, down south of the Sudan, that area and so on, intermarriages and so on and so forth. But the truth of their history is that they never, ever built even a village. They are just a wandering people. They are just like the gypsies of Europe. That's who they are. They are they are gypsies. They are what uh, Superanquency called uh, is Sokugo. Mm. In the in the Novo Burning Grass. Yes, the Sokugos. Um, and because they are stateless, they are townless, they are villageless, they've always roamed about in the bushes and so on and so forth. So let's give yes. them citizenship of states. Yeah, but the, the, the way they the way the grew, the way they emerged, in fact, giving them a state is anathema to what they consider to be their culture. They grew up with animals. They but grew... culture is not constant. I know that is the, is, is, the, is, the, is the majority of them have resisted change. Because we're not giving them education. No. There were some of them who were educated, who became, who had opportunities in the countries where they were, but they deliberately, those who emerged and they were educated, preferred having their majority still being underdogs so that they could continue to exploit them and use their state, the state of their being, to take advantage of the larger communities which those who have now escaped from these bushes are now settled. I'll tell you what, is, what, what they're doing. I've just cited the case of Aminu, uh, Jubil Amino. And Aminu Kano, a, a, a house man, fought this something to the ground. He, he was, uh, Aminu Kano, God bless his soul, or said, look, let us rehabilitate these foreigners. Let's give them a space. Let them be somewhere. But the thing is that those of them that emerged, like uh, like uh, like Sadaruno, like uh, like even uh, Danfordio, not only will they not want to allow the larger communities among themselves to settle down, they would rather just be a minority when they conquer a place, make themselves the emma of the place, and allow their own members to still be roaming the, the, the forest. Because they were, those who didn't escape this forest life, they were brought up with cows. They think like cows. They, like somebody observed, they lived in the jungle with snakes, with corbas. So their thinking has never gone beyond that animal level. So when you see them carrying guns, when you see them raping and killing people, that is their mentality, that is the level of their reasoning, that's the level of their development, of their civilization. But Chief, if this persists yes. in a state where we have intelligentsia, yes. is it not failure on our part not to have come up with countermeasures to rehabilitate their minds and use their energy for development? We ought to, we should have, 
That was why Awolo wanted to be president of the whole of the, of the country, so I could spread the kind of civilization he brought to the Western region, which Zeke also brought to the Eastern region. Which Amadou Bello tried to bring which, to the Northern region. Which, which Amadou Bello tried to bring to the Northern region. But they resisted. Amadou Bello tried, but Amadou Bello still preferred the Fulani dictating the pace everywhere, even in the North, which was not the case in, this, in, the, in, in, in the South. When Aolo brought Western education to the West, it did not discriminate between the Yoruba or the Edo or the Ijo in Western region. Azikwe or Okpara did not discriminate between the Igbo or the Kalabari or the Efik or the Anang or the uh, Ijo in, in the Eastern region at that time. Unlike the case of Amadou Bello, what he did was to ensure that every, he created fiefdoms, he created fiefdoms and made sure that the owners of such nationalities were, were brought under. And so they could not influence the global picture, even of the Northern region, which ought to have been. Even the colonialists could not influence the social structures of the North. Because they didn't, exactly, now you're talking, they did not allow it. Or because, the colonialists because, allowed it. No, because they, to their own advantage. Their because own advantage. They, they, the, the colonial, colonialists realized that they could not take an Igbo man for granted. They could not take a Yoruba for granted. They could not take an Igbo man for granted. But they found that these people who were more interested, the Fulani were more interested in just preserving their own status quo and allowing the rest of the North to be underdogs, which suited their own philosophy and which also allowed the British to do their ruling by indirect rule for them. So it, uh, it paid both of them to be what they were, to remain as they were. And that's why they remained stagnant. It's not a question of why didn't we create a template to uplift them or to take them out of the woods. It was because, one, they say it is their culture. Two, it pays their leadership, the few that had escaped from the bushes, to subjugate the rest of their people. Is religion a problem here? The, Fulan, the, the average Fulani person is not a religious animal. We have so many friends among them. They drink, they fornicate, they, also sort of, they do all the things that all human beings do. So it's not a question of religion. There is no, there's no question of anybody being truly a Muslim there. You know, even, I mean, I knew a chief judge who was supposed to be leading uh, uh, Muslim prayers, who anytime he came to me uh, in my official residence, he would put a, a brandy or whiskey in, the, in, 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 in a mug and be drinking, and they will smoke and all that. So I don't think it's religion. When they started this uh, Sharia, how I many of them are obeying the Sharia? How I many of them? No, not, not any of their leaders. So it's not religion per se, but they use religion to deceive people and say, uh, uh, I mean, Hausas were not Muslims at all. So they say, well, let's give you a superior religion, we'll give you Islam. But that didn't apply to the South because We've had Muslims in Yoruba land even before 14th century. So truly, what we are fighting against, or what is going on, is clash of culture. And civilizations. And civilizations. That's right. Not really the Fulani versus the Igbo, or the Fulani versus the Yoruba. No. It's clash of civilizations. Yes, clash of civilizations and clash of cultures. Yes, you're right. That means we have not really integrated as a people. Never. We have never been. So the word the Nigerian people is a fallacy. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Because, again, in those days, you will say eh, there, were, there have always been Igbo markets, there are markets in uh, Enugu, there have always been Sabos in Shagamu. But those Sabos were occupied by Mus, by Hausas. Hausas are peaceful people. We traded in Kola Nord, we didn't, we did Even the few Fulanis that came with them at that time, when you had a Sabo in, in Shagamu or in Ibadan here, they would still look for one Fulani man and make him the Aseriki. How did the Aousa accept the they were dominion they were, so, they were the subdued. Fulani. They were subdued. Despite their large number. Yes, they were subdued. Of course, they killed, they, they ruined, they, 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 they extirpated their seven kingdoms. They killed their seven rulers and took over on, under the guise of religion. Another thing they used, they, told, they used the word corruption. Oh, your people are corrupt. We are saints. Your people are corrupt. They've always used the word corruption to deceive people. But the jihad is over. How come the Hausa man is yet 
to claim that house and house again. It's just now that the efforts we are making in the South have, be, have begun to yield fruits. You will be surprised to hear that now in, in Hausa land, we now have Hausa Christians. Never had that before. Never. You have now have middle belt forum that are saying we are not northerners, we are middle belters. We are not northerners. Don't call us northerners. Now, when you see a Jukum man or you see a Lantan man and you say you are Hausa or you are Fulani, he will be angry. He may even draw his dagger. Don't call me Fulani. I'm not Fulani. I'm not Hausa. What we did not know until recently is that when you call a Fulani man Hausa, he will be angry. He will say, Banzani. Because he knows that I'm superior to Hausa. Can you say I'm Hausa? But before now, before Buhari came to establish his uh, suzerainty of Nigeria, we all, we all lumped all of them together for northerners, northerners, northerners. And like I wrote some four years ago, there's no north. There's no north that we used to know. It. The north is dead. There's nothing called north anymore. So there's a Fulani now standing on his own. He's, he's standing on his own. There's no more north. If they try any war today, oh God of mercy. The kind of cohesion, cohesion you had in the army, the military in 1966, will never happen again in this country, if there is a country at all. You will not find a Hausa soldier now, I mean, an Igbo soldier going to Enugu to kill a fellow, fellow Igbo. You will not even find an Igbo soldier coming to Ibano to kill a Yoruba man, or a Yoruba soldier going to Enugu to kill an Igbo man. It will not happen again. So the Lantan people, the Benue people, will never, ever allow themselves to be used by any Fulani, any Fulani mischief maker. So if I'm getting you right, your argument is that the Fulani hegemony has yeah. been broken. Dead. If the Fulani hegemony has been broken, yes. does it mean that the social, the social structure of Nigeria is about to witness a very hard hit that will lead to a new Nigeria? Yes, for those who... I agree with you to the extent of the fact that there are still some people who want a Nigeria, uh, a group that I don't belong to. But for such people, yes, uh, with the weakening of Fulani hegemony, there could be a Nigeria that will integrate the Suba Fulanis, the Tang Fulanis, and still reconstruct, rebuild, and then have a Nigeria that should be, but I, as a person, as Tola Deni, believe that it will take probably a thousand years to change the mindset of a Fulani person whose philosophy is kill, maim, rape, send away people from their land and let me occupy it. That is the Bush Fulani. It is the Bush Fulani. Not the town Fulani. Not the town Fulani. And the town Fulani is more in number. No! The town Fulani is less than one percent. How did you get that figure? Oh, go and find out. Let them allow. Let, let us. Let them allow. It says, "Oh, the town Fulani, they're very few. The few, the ones, the ones who have in Abuja, or the few that dot, uh, that dot uh, spaces in Sokoto. I'm sure that you know that Sokoto, as we speak, is not a Fulani. It's not a Fulani town. Is it not? No. That's a mistake we make. Sampara is not a Fulani town. There are more houses in Sampara than Fulani. There are more houses in Kano than Fulani. But the Fulani governs. They are a town. They are in charge. Yes, so it's their town. Yes, yes. By, by subterfuge, by cunning, by, by, by crookedness, by all sorts of uh, gimmick. Or by integration. Not integration. By intimidation. And they are... They, I said they are politically savvy. What they did to the rest of Nigeria, when they realized that the Fulani in the military, they could no longer use the military to retain power indefinitely. Since they've had power they had, and they had, they had access to the treasury, they said, oh yes, uh, Edmond is from the East or wherever, brilliant man. He may likely oppose us and contest with us and rival us. Let's make him an ambassador. Let's give him an oil block. Let's make him a billionaire. We padlock his mouth. Let's get an abiola. 
Make him a billionaire. Let's get this. Let's get that. And make them big. They will never be able to look us in the face. Then we can continue. Looting the treasury, which we can continue. And once we have, when we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are in control of the treasury, we are in control of everywhere. So we can hire thugs. We can do whatever we would like. And that is why they introduced what I call plutogaki into Nigerian political uh, etymology. Plutogaki. Meaning? Plutocracy is the government of the rich. Yeah. Oligarchy is the government of the muscle men. So the rich man will employ the muscle men and they'll be ruling. So you have the rich men who will employ thugs in Lagos, who will snatch boxes, who will prevent Igbos from voting, and then they will, pre they will now have the government. That's what they have, the plutogarchy. But the, pluto the plutocrats will still be ruling, and the oligarchs will still be their food soldiers. You know, you've always talked about how savvy the Fulani man is yes, in yes, politics. Pol oh, yes. But you also have savvy politicians in the South. They never had power. They are beginning to have power. Oh, yes, now. So they've learned. No, how they, to be they, savvy. no the power they have is still a few of them that, I mean, you can count the, those who have power on your, finger, your fingertips. The fact that you have governors, I'm, I'm sure you're not referring to having APC governors who are southerners or PDB governors or southerners. Yes, I'm, that's what I'm referring to. No. Is, that not, is that not political power? Uh, when you are a governor and uh, you cannot give order to, the, to your chief security officer, you cannot command a commissioner of police in your state, you are a governor, you cannot pay, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot pay your judges. You know judges are being paid in Abuja. You know now that the salary of NTA staff, Nigerian Television Authority staff, all over Nigeria, their salaries are being paid straight from Abuja. You are, you are a director of NTA in Enugu or NTA in, in Abekuta, you cannot pay this, you cannot, you cannot pay the salary of your staff from your office. Which part do they have? That they have to go to Abuja every month to collect, to collect dues to pay their salaries. Mm. So when we say some of them have power, you have some, you have some who have now who have occupied position of power, but they are still just in office. It's only a few of them that are now trying to assert themselves to, to return, because now they've been pushed to that level by their people. Look at the case of Amateku now. God save the soul of any Yoruba governor that will probably go to the street and say, I don't support Amateku. He knows that his parents will be killed. He knows. No Yoruba governor will publicly say, I don't support Amateku. Now, before we round off, there is the Fulani question. Yes. There is the Igbo question. Yes. And there is the Yoruba question. Yoruba question, question. yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have been discussing the Fulani question. Yes, sir. If we don't resolve these questions, we'll go our ways, right? Yes, but, certainly. But we can answer these questions and build a one Nigeria that you don't want. It is possible. Nothing is impossible, mm. but it is difficult. Difficult in the sense is that by character, by pedigree, by culture, by level of civilization, we have one leg amongst these legs that believes in domination, that believes that others are inferior, they are infidels, and their own concept of their own religion tells them that these infidels have no right to live, to exist. Their belief can be changed if they are engaged. Hitler had that belief. Hitler was not, it wasn't, it wasn't a spiritual or faith fail. It just a belief. We are not talking about faith. Faith is very emotional. Faith is very fundamental. Those who believe in God, it's very difficult to stop them from believing in Despite God. Despite this belief, we've been together since 1960. I know. They did not, they had power, and we, the rest of the country allowed them to continue in the hope that it will change, it will change. But when you now had the, when you now had the great poverty in the North, you now had all these imaginaries and you have all these insurgents and all those, you know, 
built up that people now begin to say no 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 you so know that 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 that, 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 yes, yes. that, would, that would create the change it might i'm i'm not i'm saying i'm not saying it is impossible i'm not i only say it's difficult it's possible that the 4 million or there about fulani who are terrorizing the rest of the country it is possible for them to have a change of heart it is possible that's not an impossible if that happens oh, it will be a great day but i don't see it happening and I don't see it coming. Mm. What I see coming is that like a people who are deaf and dumb, they want to pull the pillars holding a building on themselves and collapse. Mm. Teacher Bento has spoken, right? <laughs> Busola Babe. Yes, Busola Babe. Busola Babe. Yes. Nguyen Tol. Nguyen Tol Ni, Nguyen Kauki, those are my names. Abba Sahid. Abba Sahid, yes. Pseudonyms. Yes. You've always been on the fire line. Well, in my own small way. Making your point. Yes, sir. Contributing to national development. Yes, sir. Yet not wanting power. No, 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 no. I don't want power. I don't, I don't need it. You don't like power. Influence is better than power. Mm. Weep no child, Ngugi Watyungu. Yes, I told, I made it into you into into a play, a television play in 1967. And we have children still weeping here. <laughs> Your artistic spirit will not die, right? Amen. You continue to write. Yes, as long as I live. And you continue to be blonde. Forever and ever. Will you write another big book? Yes, in the Bell of Vampires is about double this side. This is 1,300 pages. In the Bell of Vampires is 2,000 plus. This weighs 5 kilograms. That one is going to weigh 10 kilograms. We need to use our car to come pick them. <laughs> Carry them on our heads. That's right. Are you sure we can hold them to read them? Uh, you don't like us holding your book. It must be on a table. That's right. That's, That's right. why they are big. Yes. You wrote... Look at what you wrote here for me. Yes. You want to read it or I read it? I said with profound affection and admiration to Edmond Dubillo, a phenomenal broadcast journalist, an iconic polemicist, uncompromising public speaker, fiery visionary and revolutionary with unimpeachable integrity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you for featuring on State Affairs. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are appreciated. Thank you. I've been discussing with Chief Tola Adini. I am Edmond Obilo.